Hello and welcome to the Just Right Snowboard channel. I'm Lars Horstmann and with this episode I am kicking off a multi-part series on snowboard shapes and design in regards to all those factors that actually contribute to how a board after all feels and rides on snow. Since there are so many little design aspects that all have influence on one another, it's really difficult to separate things out and treat them individually. So ideally this would be one really long video that goes into all those details and relationships and wraps it all up under one hat. But I mean, let's be real, who wants to watch uh, Lars nerd out about snowboards for two hours in one piece? So instead, I'll be dropping a whole bunch of shorter episodes on this subject in the near future. And if you ever happen to finish one of them thinking, whoa, that wasn't quite the whole story, be patient, there's either something else coming or it's already there in a different episode. And today I'll be starting this whole thing uh, with a topic that isn't really talked about all that much. And that is side cut versus turning radius and what uh, board flex and effective edge all have to do with that. The moment in snowboarding when you notice those things the most is actually when you're carving. And carving is a bit of a funny one over the last decade. Um, it has become cool again to carve and uh, people almost treat it like a trick sometimes. I hear people say, you know, just like in skateboarding, hey, do a kickflip. They say, hey, do a euro carve. And uh, so it's almost a bit of a trick thing to be carving and laying it out. And really what it is is much simpler. The person that described it to me best once um, is my friend Neil McNabb. Neil is a guy from the UK. He is a fully certified split board guide, like mountain guide. Um, he wrote a whole bunch for the UK Instructor Association Basie. And he also is a former racer. So Neil is quite the nerd with his own snowboard company, McNabb Snowboards. Um, very cool stuff coming out of that guy's head. And he once very uh, fittingly described it to me best saying, carving is simply turning a snowboard by its design. And why that is so true, I'm going to try to explain that to you now. The two things that contribute the most to actually being able to turn a snowboard are side cut and flex. And the side cut of a board is basically this curve, the outline here. Um, which you could measure if you wanted to by putting a board on edge like this, like onto its contact points. And then you would simply measure from the table to the very highest point here in the center of the board. Um, and that would give you a measurement that you would call side cut depth. And that's a bit relative and doesn't tell you all that much uh, on its own, but it's quite interesting to look at when you're actually comparing uh, certain boards. So how does that make the board uh, turn and why is the flex important? When we are snowboarding, we are always on one edge or the other, right? Like you can't really get very far if you don't tilt the board onto one edge. Um, so what happens when the board is on edge? Because it has a side cut and this center of the side cut moves further away from the snow, the higher I tilt it. I'm gaining um, with board angulation, I'm gaining room in the middle to actually push into. And as I push into, my board creates a curve on the snow. And if I follow that curve, then I am indeed riding the snowboard by its design. The Neil McNabb quote that I brought up earlier. Um, so why is flex so important with that? Obviously, imagine you have a board that has a really deep side cut curve. So has a lot of room to actually push it but the board is super, super stiff and you can't actually compress that, then that is no good. Because simply what would happen at the point where you cannot um, compress this, this center here any longer, eventually um, you would lose contact to the snow right in the middle. So side cut depth and board flex um, are actually very tightly connected and surely interesting to look at when you're comparing boards. You will hardly ever find the number uh, for side cut depth stated on any manufacturer's board spec sheet. 
what you will find instead is effective edge and turning radius. And turning radius and side cut depth are absolutely not the same thing. So um, note on effective edge, the effective edge is basically uh, the end of your side cut. Basically where, where um, your side cut ends and you reach the widest spot in the tail and then the widest spot in the nose between those two spots, that's your effective edge. The radius of your board is, uh, so that's a 153 uh, women's shorty um, and it has a seven meter 90 turning radius. And what that means is that this side cut that you're seeing here, this curve is part of a giant circle with a 7.9 meter radius. So if I continued this curve until it comes all the way around in a circle, it would draw a, a, a perfect circle on the ground with a seven meter 90 um, radius. Now, if we went and simply extended the effective edge of this board to create a one meter 73, like a 20 centimeter longer board without changing anything else, what would happen is uh, this curve would simply continue and, and continue here as well. And if I then do my um, side cut depth measurement on the table, what I would get is a curve that because it continues longer and longer, would also lift the center of this curve higher off the table and therewith give me more room to push into. So if I do not manipulate the turning radius of the 153 and I only extend the effective edge, I actually get a board that is 20 centimeters longer and yet can ride a tighter radius turn than the 153. And that is only because of the deeper side cut and the room I gain to push into the board and tighten up this turn shape that my edge draws in the snow. So with that example, it becomes kind of obvious that uh, side cut depth, turning radius, the length of the effective edge, and also the board flex are all totally interconnected and that is really bloody difficult to create a snowboard in particular with carving in mind um, that at any given point of angulation distributes the pressure evenly across the entire edge and therefore creates a maximum edge grip. So the example that I just gave you uh, simply uh, making this women's shorty from 153 into a 173 without actually changing um, the radius, you would have to play with the flex. What becomes easier to understand with those explanations is that the number that is stated as the side cut radius of the board really states the largest possible turn that that board can ride in a clean, pencil line kind of arc. And that is simply because what I explained earlier, as soon as I tilt this thing over, those seven meter 90 are going to re be reduced more and more, the more I tilt the board on edge and the more room I gain here, and the more I push into the center, and the more I uh, bend the board into a tighter and tighter arc. So the number you're reading always describes the largest uh, turn that that board will make. So here's a fun story for you. This is my uh, Cheater 200. That's indeed a 200 centimeter long snowboard that doesn't really fit into the room. Um, this thing has about a 173 or something like that effective edge and the radius is uh, 12 meters. And this is the board that out of all of my boards with the longest effective edge and the largest turning radius, but also the deepest side cut. When I do this measurement that I did here on the table, this board has by quite a bit, the deepest side cut in my entire quiver. And um, what happened last year, uh, last season, I was riding with two friends on a kind of medium steepness, but fairly narrow pitch. And they were both on boards. Uh, one was on a board that was below an eight meter radius and the other one was like on an 850 type uh, radius. And we all went down that run carving, trying to carve clean S turns. And I ended up um, carving the tightest turns 
um, on that pitch out of all those three boards, although I was like by far on the longest board. So now, obviously, um, the amount of angulation that you can get on, on snow um, is a skill thing, right? Like it, the board, just because the, the side cut is so deep, uh, doesn't mean the board will just do it. Um, but anyways, that's kind of secondary. My, my point is, um, if you have a board with a large turning radius, but also a deep side cut, because it has a long effective edge, what you're getting there is a board that has an extremely large range of different um, turn sizes that you can actually utilize. So um, this idea of any given longer snowboard is automatically cumbersome or, or whatever, like takes a lot of space to ride. It is simply not as easy as that to judge. Um, yes, this is clearly my most cumbersome board because two meters is just a little bit crazy. Um, but the fact that I can uh, carve tighter turns than somebody on a seven meter 80 board, um, I think that's something to consider when you, when you pick a board that, that you really pick for turning and for, for carving on the whole mountain. Depending on your level, you might get way more out of it uh, going down the route of a longer board with more effective edge because you get a much larger range of turn sizes. So I also want to play this sizing game the opposite direction, meaning uh, let's shrink this board and see what happens. So if I turn this 153 into let's say 133, uh, solely by, by taking away from the effective edge. So I cut it off here and then I cut it off here as well. Um, if I did that, the board would drop down right on the table. So I would reduce the space that I have here in the middle. I would reduce side cut depth. So what I get then, if you think of what I explained earlier, is a board that although the radius is still seven meter 90, the, the smallest radius that I can get out of it would be larger than on this 153, simply because there's no room to actually compress the center further into a tighter arc. So when you take all that and you look at some of the more extreme modern short fats, where a guy like my, uh, my dimensions would probably ride like a 146 or something, um, you will understand why those boards have such small uh, turning radii. Um, on a 146, let's say, your effective edge won't be much more than a meter or a meter five. So if you gave that board like an eight meter turning radius and, and you do this um, you know, side cut depth measurement thing again, you would realize that with an eight meter radius on a one meter edge, um, there wouldn't be much room in the center to actually compress that thing. And, and the board that is supposed to feel nimble and, and quick would actually uh, not be very nimble and quick to turn at all. So these boards need quite a deep side cut and a, a very small turning radius. Now, uh, there's two limitations to that. Uh, the one is obviously the range of turn sizes that you get out of such a board. So if you consider my two meter cheater giving me 12 to possibly under six meters um, of, of turn sizes. And then you look at a 146 uh, with, a, with a five and a half meter turning radius or six meter turning radius, you're very likely um, not able to, to do anything tighter than like a what? Three and a half meter uh, radius. Otherwise, I mean, that's already so tight, uh, hard to imagine. Um, that's one limitation, not that big of a range. And the other limitation is speed, right? You can't really um, ride a board with a super tight uh, radius and super deep side cut on such a short edge uh, at high speed and just tip it on edge. What would happen is uh, it's like the same effect as if you are driving a vehicle uh, with 120 kilometers an hour on the highway and then all of a sudden you are turning the steering wheel. Like it, it just doesn't work. Your momentum down the hill is way too uh, high um, for the radius that the board wants to, to um, engage with. So you would either chatter out or you would slide or the, the, the edge would just spit you out or whatever. Uh, but you certainly won't be carving a clean turn in your, you know, under five meter radius um, coming into the turn at 50 kilometers an hour. 
Now, how can we use all this information when picking a board? So if you are, for example, between two snowboards, they both stayed eight meter radius, um, and you then look at effective edge, it should be the one with the longer effective edge that gives you a larger range of possible turn sizes, simply because uh, the extended effective edge creates a relatively deeper side cut, and then you have that room in the center to push into and tighten up that turn even more. Um, sometimes these numbers can be quite backwards, and, and I have an example uh, right here with me, and that's basically this 153 shorty uh, stating 7 meter 90 uh, radius, but the board has a fairly long effective edge relatively to its overall length, and um, that's quite a bit of side cut down here. You can actually see, so I can uh, move my hand in here quite a bit. Um, so the, the board has quite some side cut to it, and if I compare it to another one here, this is more of a free ride board. Um, that's only 148 and it stayed seven meter 60 radius. So this should be the board that turns tighter. However, when you do the, um, the test here, my, my fingers like just about fit under. I don't have that much wiggle room and that's because of the shorter effective edge. Now, um, I would assume that the 53 with a seven meter 90 radius is actually capable of making a tighter turn than uh, the 148 with a seven meter 60 radius. And that is, that is somewhat confusing, but I think with my explanations from before, uh, this all makes sense. Why would you uh, differentiate in that kind of way? Um, basically uh, the benefit of a deep side cut or, or a, a short turning radius is obviously nimbleness and like playfulness and, and responsiveness. Um, but uh, that, that kind of, you know, you could also uh, put that negatively and call it twitchy. Uh, that's not necessarily very good when you're riding high speeds. So uh, free ride boards quite often have a fairly shallow side cut or a larger turning radius. Um, and this is one of them. So that would be like more of a free ride board that is uh, particularly stable at high speed. Um, and yeah, basically if you pick your snowboards with those numbers in mind, that's a way to uh, at least get a little bit of an idea of what you're buying. All right, I hope that wasn't overly complicated and I hope you can actually do something with the information from today. And I must admit that I find it quite difficult to uh, talk about board design and shapes because there's so many aspects and it's always like one thing leads to another and keeping that nicely organized and digestible isn't really that easy. Um, so yeah, I hope that was okay for you. And the thing that I got out of diving into this world so deeply is simply that I feel much uh, better about making choices uh, when it comes to buying a new snowboard. Like understanding what you're buying can save you so much money uh, and give you so much joy after all. So just, you know, reflect on the, the, those board specs and reflect on boards that you've ridden before and, and keep comparing them, keep riding them. Uh, you'll surely develop a deeper understanding of board design for yourself. So some of these um, subtopics from today are likely going to come up again in one of the next episodes in this multi-part series. And up until then, I hope you uh, enjoyed what you've seen. If that's the case, don't be afraid of sharing it with your friends. Uh, subscribe to the channel, get the notifications here so you uh, be being notified what's dropping next. And uh, hopefully I'll see you out there. Happy turns.